bless you. Stand and put your hands together for the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. All right, shake somebody's hand around you and say, get ready for the word of the Lord this morning. <laughs> hey, man, you may be seated today after you do that. God bless you. All right, God bless you. We're going to the word today, and we're going to continue studying about I am Jesus, the, the statements that he made. He said seven di different I am statements in the book of John. He said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth. I am the life. He said, I am the gate, I am the bread, I am the resurrection. He also said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the vine, and those that remain connected to the vine shall have life. This morning, we're going to study the part that Jesus, the word of God says, the Lord said, I am the good shepherd in John chapter 10, verse number 1. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Aren't you thankful to have a good shepherd in your life this morning? Amen. <laughs> Now, there's something to know when he makes the statement. Now, this seems like an old statement, and you've heard it all your life. But there's something that you should know about the statement when he says, I am the good shepherd. There's an implication here that you might be missing. And the implication is this, is that there are other shepherds that are not good. And that he is the good shepherd. He's pointing the difference between what he is and what the other shepherds are. And he's implying to us by saying, I am the good shepherd... He's implying that there are things out there that will hurt us. There are things out there that will destroy us and that are waiting. In fact, one scripture, his word says even more than the implication. He says that there is a lion out there that is seeking whom he may devour. Speaking of us as a flock and as a sheep. John chapter 10 verse 1 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold... Rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. So there are shepherds out there that instead of going through the gate in the proper way, the word of God says they will go over the wall and will snatch a sheep and they will go back out to where they came from and devour that sheep. John chapter 10 verse 10 says the thief's purpose is to steal, to kill, and ultimately to destroy your life. I mean, know that there, is a, that there are things out there. They're, they're not just out there to get you involved in things for a temporary basis. But there are things out there, even for the saints of God, even for the sheep, even for the flock this morning, that once that lures you out there into the pathway of destruction, it will not just be there for uh, temptation purposes, but it will be out there to ultimately destroy your life. But the Lord says, my purpose is completely the opposite of the world's purpose. And my purpose as a good shepherd is not to destroy your life. But my purpose is to give you a rich and a satisfying life. Now, I want you to understand that in scriptures, that as you study scriptures, that, the, that sheep are mentioned about 200 times in the word of God. When you study it, you'll find that there are many references to sheep and, she, uh, and to, to, to the flock of the Lord about 200 times. In scriptures, dogs are mentioned about 44 times. Cats, I want you to know, are never mentioned in scripture, so just keep that in mind. And in fact, cats are in the lion family, and the lion is compared to the devil, and so that tells you something about cats. Amen. So just keep that in mind. I'm not here to pick on anyone's animals, but just keep that in mind this morning. Now, but I want to tell you something about sheep. That I want to ask you a question. Have you ever seen a sheep in a circus? Probably not, because sheep are some of the dumbest animals on the planet, and they're hard to train. I've seen lions, I've seen elephants, uh, I've seen dogs, I've seen all kinds of animals in the circus, but very few sheep, in, I've never seen a sheep in the circus, matter of fact, because sheep are not very smart. And guess what? You and I, as he is a shepherd and we are the sheep, we are compared to sheep. So that tells us something about our lives as Christians. Sometimes we don't make good decisions. And sometimes we are not very smart. Now I want to give you four challenges of being a sheep this morning. Number one, sheep get easily lost. 
right? As in fact, the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 53, we all we like sheep have done what? We have gone astray. So we make decisions. We, we are happy. We're doing good in God's kingdom where everything is going great in our life. And because we are sheep and not very smart, we sometimes make an error in judgment and we go astray whenever everything is perfect. When everything is wonderful, we can't even explain why we went off the course that we were on because everything was so great in God's kingdom and doing so good for our life. And suddenly, just like a dumb sheep, we go down the wrong path and we make a mistake. Has anybody ever made a mistake and gone down the wrong path? Would you put your hand in the air this morning? Amen. And we say things like, you know, this might make me happy if I try this. I'm happy now, but I might become more happy if I go down this path. Think I'll try the clubs for a while. Like the clubs are going to make my life better. Think I'll try the clubs. Hmm, I think I'll start drinking a little bit. You know, my life's fine right now. Things are going good right now. But I think I'll start drinking at the clubs for a while. and Just try that out. That's what sheep do. They make dumb decisions. They say things like, hmm, I think I'll take my paycheck and I'll go to Sunland Park and I'll gamble with my paycheck and make things better for my family. Well, sheep make dumb mistakes. Think how happy my wife will be, your mind tells you as a sheep, when I invest my whole check in the slot machines and I double my money. Sheep make incredibly bad decisions. So sheep get easily lost. Has anybody ever been lost before? And you're thankful that the Lord found you out there somewhere lost in the fray, but you're thankful the Lord found you out there somewhere. If you are, would you put your hands together this morning? Amen. Now, something else we should know about sheep. Sheep are defenseless. They are defenseless. You know, other animals have fangs. And they can, if, if they're in a fight, they can use their, their fangs and they can grab at another animal and they can try to win the fight with their fangs. Other animals have claws. And they can fight in a, in a fight and they can claw. And they can maybe win the fight with the claws. Other animals... They don't have a whole lot of defenses, but they have wings. And when something's going wrong, they can fly away from the trouble. There are other animals that have horns to fight with. Some have speed to run away from danger. Some, some wild animals have purses. And they can use purses to fight off wild, uh, wild animals. Come on now, that was a good joke. And I know you're kind of sleepy because you feel like it's actually 10, 15, but it's 11, 15, guys. Come on, I know it's a spring forward Sunday, but some animals have purses. Did you get it? All right. Bad joke. I'll be here all day if you need to talk to me. Amen. Now, sheep, the only thing they can do, here comes a bad joke, so get ready. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, here comes a bad joke. Get ready. You're in on it, so watch this. Sheep, the only defense mechanism, Brother Johnny, they have is they can go back off. Back off. I told you it was bad, so you were ready for that. We too, Brother Johnny, thank you, Brother John. I just love you, brother. And welcome, Brother Himate. I know you set your clock wrong, but I'm glad you showed up. Amen. We too. Everybody give Brother Himate a hand. All right, all right. We're going to give everybody a hand that comes in after this point, all right? We're just glad you're here. We too are defenseless without the armor of God in our life. Number three, sheep are very stubborn. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you right now. Now, some of you didn't even do that. That shows how stubborn you are. I asked you to turn to your neighbor and tell them how stubborn they were, and you didn't even participate. That shows how stubborn you are. All right. Amen. You know what? what it's, that's right. That's right, Brother Stan. You're just so stubborn back there. Now, listen. Sheep are so stubborn that when they're caught in the rocks, they don't have a reverse gear. They just keep ramming themselves. This is how dumb sheep are. They just ram themselves in between the place where they're stuck even harder. And they get, if this is even a word, they get stucker. <laughs> That's where I'm from the south, so it's legal. They get more, they get stucker, the southern te terminology. And you know, sometimes we Christians, we just keep trying the same things over and over and over. And we get, pardon my southern uh, uh, terminology this morning, we get stucker. And we, our life gets worse 
and we just keep getting the same results. We do the same thing, and we just keep getting the same results. You know, we, we, we say things like, you know, I just keep attracting the same old kind of guys. Right? All they want is my body. Well, you know what, honey? You might try covering up your body, and you might get a different kind of guy. Right? But we just keep trying the same old thing. Every time I go to the casino, I lose all my money. They don't want me to win. Well, he hello, brothers and sisters. Stop going to the casino. It's rigged. Well, maybe it is rigged. Right? They don't want me to win. No, they sure don't want you to win. Right? Wake up. Sheep do the same old thing. Every time I stop coming to church, my life goes into total chaos. Well, babe, stop coming to start coming to church all the time. Don't take breaks for away from church. And see what happens in your life. Number four, what I've learned about sheep. Sheep are filthy. They're filthy. And, and, and I know some of you are sitting there going, wait a second, Pastor. When we did Messiah, the sheep was perfect. He was he was white. Well, guess what? We took him in the backyard and we put we put the blue on the blue uh, shampoo on him and we dyed him white. When we picked him up, you wouldn't even recognize him. He was full of mud and poop and everything manure and he stunk. And he was a lot. I mean, he stunk so bad. I put him in the back of my, I didn't even want to get the back of my truck dirty. He stunk so bad. We put him in a cage, a, 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 a little cage in the back of my truck because he stunk so bad. And he, and he was filthy because sheep are filthy. We had to power wash that sheep to make him clean. Guys, we as sheep tend to get dirty. As Christians, we tend to make mistakes. And we tend to fall into sin rather easily. We tend to make dumb, crazy, can I use the word stupid, Mistakes, we go, man, that was so stupid. Because things were going so good, and we did the dumbest possible thing, and we did the, I mean, just crazy mistakes that we make. We tend to fall for the same traps over and over again. We, the Word of God says that we tend to return to the vomit. Here's a fact, brothers and sisters. Sheep need a shepherd. And I want to submit to this congregation today, we need Jesus Christ. He is the shepherd, and we need him today. And without him, we are so vulnerable. Amen. And that is why I am glad Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Amen. Now I want to talk about the shepherd for a moment this morning. What does the good shepherd do? I'll ask you a question. Number one, what does the good shepherd do? Number one, he guides. The good shepherd guides. Psalms chapter 23 verse 3 says, He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Guess what, brothers and sisters? He does not want us to get lost. You and I don't have to get lost because the Lord does not want us to get lost. In fact, John chapter 10 verse 3 says, the gatekeeper, he opens the gate for the shepherd and the sheep recognize his voice and they come to him. He calls his sheep by name. He doesn't just call the whole flock, but he calls each one of you by name. He knows your name and leads you out. Verse 4, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. And they follow him because they know his voice. You say, well, pastor, I don't recognize his voice. I don't, I, don't, I don't recognize his voice. Now, let me tell you something. Let me give you an illustration this morning. If, I, if, if, there, were, if there was 100 women in a room and they were all talking because we know they would be talking because that's what women do. They talk 30 times, 30,000 words a day and men use 15. That's the statistics. And 100 women were in a room talking. None of the women are laughing this morning. In fact, they're all texting right now. They're not even paying attention. It's a strange thing. But all the men are glued in. Thank you. Thank you, men, for being glued in this morning. Bad thing is we have more women in the church today. That's bad. bad. We're, we're going to reverse this here. But let me just tell you this. If there was 100 women in, the, in a room and they were all talking and we blindfolded you 
to go into that room and to pick out my wife's voice, you probably might not be able to recognize her voice. Why? Because you don't know her well enough. You haven't been around her well enough. And you don't recognize her voice because you haven't, you haven't been around her. You don't know her well enough. But if you would take, if you would blindfold me and, and walk me into that room with a hundred voices, women voices, I would instantly be able to pick out my wife's voice. Why? Because I know her and I've been around her a long time. I have an intimate relationship with her. And so that voice is very familiar to me. And what I'm saying this morning is this. If you don't know the voice of the Lord, it's because you haven't been around him enough. You don't know him well enough. You haven't been intimate enough with him. But he's willing, he wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He is willing to lay, he laid down his life for you. He wants to have a covenant relationship with you this morning. If you know his voice. Amen. The word of God says he calls his sheep by name. Amen. A pastor friend of mine. Amen. You know, he never, he never, he, it's hard sometimes as a pastor. And he, he has a rather large church. And he said one day he was out in the foyer and he was, he was, he had met this one particular girl months and months before. And he said he's terrible with names and he always gets this fear that he's not going to be able to know their name. And so this one particular day, this girl came up to him in the lobby before church and he, all of a sudden God just put her name in his mind. And it was something like Sarah and he just, out of nowhere, he said, Sarah, how are you doing? And he said she just stopped in her tracks. She, she, was, she was about to walk past him, but she just stopped in her tracks and turned around. And he says, oh, no, I'm, I probably don't have her name right, and she's going to turn around and correct me. And when she turned around, big old tears were rolling down her cheek. And she said, Pastor, I just want you to know that I, I was coming to church one more time, and I was going to take my life after today, but I wanted to give the Lord one more time in my life. And when you called my name, I realized that if you know my name with a big church like this, then I know for sure that the Lord knows my name. And I believe that the Lord loves me so much. Amen. Amen. The Lord knows your name and he cares for you. Number two, he provides. He provides. The, the Bible says in Psalms 123, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I Let's say it together. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. There is not one thing that if you're a child of the Lord that you lack today. You've got everything that you need in your life. You ought to praise him and worship him this morning. It says he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Guess what, brothers and sisters? Sheep will not lie down when they're hungry. But you're able to lie down in green pastures because the Lord has fed you. A sheep won't eat if he has tension. A sheep won't eat if he's afraid. They, they're, just, they're too worried. They're too stressed out and they won't eat. But the Bible says because we have a good shepherd, you're able to lie down. Amen. You're able to lie down because he's taken everything. He's got all. You don't have to fear anything. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. He leads me beside the quiet waters. You know, a sheep won't drink from rushing waters or moving waters. They only drink from quiet waters. Why? Because they're sort of clumsy animals. They fall. And... and they know that if they fall into rushing waters, they won't be able to get out because all that hair and that fur they've got, it will get saturated with water and it will drown them because of the weight of the water. And so they'll only creep up to steel waters because they want to make certain they don't fall in. And the word of God says that, that the Lord, that Jesus Christ leads you and I beside the quiet waters. He provides for us. The word of God says he refreshes my soul. He doesn't just take care of me on the outside. He doesn't just heal my body. 
by the word of God says, by, my, by his stripes that I am made whole, that by the blood of Jesus that I'm saved. But he doesn't just do all that. He, he refreshes my soul, my innermost being of what I am. He refreshes my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God says that the shepherd corrects. He corrects. This may not be good news to you at, at, at first. Because you may not understand what correction really is. But, but the word of God tells us that we should be thankful for correction. In fact, Job, the word of God says in chapter 5, it says, Blessed is the one who, who, whom God corrects. So I am blessed when God corrects me. I am blessed when, a, when an elder of the church stops me and says, Hey, I just want to speak this into your life because I, I, I just have... God spoke to me and he put your face in my, your, my, my mind and I just want to speak a word into your life and, and try to help you avoid some traps that maybe I fell into. I don't want you to fall into. I, I am blessed when I find correction in my life. I am blessed when I've got a mother or a father that cares enough for me that they're willing to not just be my friend, but they're willing to be my father and my mother and put correction in my life. Can I get an amen today? Hallelujah. Blessed is the one who finds God's correction. I shouldn't pout about it. I shouldn't get down about it. I shouldn't get worried because somebody puts correction in my life. I ought to feel blessed. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Watch this. For he wounds because he also binds up. He injures, but his hand also heals. What a powerful, rich scripture that is. That the loving shepherd, you know, the loving shepherd would, would wound us. He would actually open us up and wound us so he can heal us and bind us up. Amen. He would, you know, a shepherd, he, the Bible says that, 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 uh, that his staff, he uses his staff in the word of God. He uses his staff to put it around the, the sheep's neck when he's in a place where he shouldn't be and he helps him come out of it. And I thank God for a loving shepherd, for a good shepherd that reaches out with his staff and puts it around my neck when I've wandered off on, off the course and got myself hung up, and he pulls me out. Amen. And, and you know, I was I, I, studying this, this this week. I, I found out that that he also not only has a staff, but he uses he, that part of that staff is the rod. And, and the and there's a difference between the the staff is to is to pull back and to help and to. And, and uh, maybe a sheep is, is hanging off somewhere and to pull him back on into the fold and to, to pull him out of, tra- out of a trap or out of a hole or out of the water or out of the mud. That's one thing. But the Word of God says that he also has a rod. And, and this is going to, you've probably never heard what I'm fixing to tell you. But he would take, if there was a really wayward sheep, the rod, he would take that rod and he would break that lamb's leg. I bet you've never heard that. Because the reason I think you haven't heard because I never heard it until this week. And he would actually break that lamb's leg. And he would take that sheep that was so wayward and so constantly in trouble. And he would break that sheep's leg so that he could take that lamb and pick him up and personally nurse him back to health. And carry him around. And, and put a splint on his leg. And nurse him. That sheep back to the place to where he could walk again. So that for the rest of that sheep's life, he would never leave the fold. Because he had such an attachment to the shepherd. He had such a love to the shepherd. And that sheep would instead of being the worst, would become one of the best in the fold. Amen. I praise God for the discipline of the Lord. I praise God I am blessed. When God corrects me, I am blessed even when God breaks me. I am blessed because that's the Lord takes me and puts me back together again. And I trust him more than I've ever trusted him before. Amen. No one ever says, oh, praise the Lord, I'm getting disciplined. Right? Kids don't go, praise God, my parents are putting me on restriction. Maybe they'll take my phone away for a month. be 
be able to talk to them for one whole month. That's awesome. No one ever does that. But, but the word says you are blessed if God chooses to correct you. Hebrews 12 and 11. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but rather seems painful. Later on, though, however, it produces a harvest. Somebody shout harvest. Peace. See, that's the key, guys, that if, if you get discipline in your life, and, that, and that's the thing some kids miss out. I'm not here to preach about kids this morning, but that's, that's why some kids are so miserable, and they're, they're 18, and they're miserable, and they want to end their life, and they're on drugs, and they've got all kind of mess happening in their life. It's because they never got this. And, 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 and the word says, no dis- discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. I don't want you to know. I understand this. I relate to this. You know, I got, and I, I've said this often, but I've got whipped. I, actually, it was whooped in the South. Five times. One of those I did not deserve. I, 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 my dad whipped me for something I didn't do. And every time I tried to tell him, he whooped whip me harder. And to this day, I never correct, and I never told him, Dad, you were wrong that day. I never, and unless he gets the tape. Because I figured that probably I got away with some that I should have got. But I want you to know, after that fifth whooping, I didn't need any more. Now, I was like 11 years old or so when I got that fifth one. But I had a vision about the whole deal. Right? Right? As I've told you before, my dad would have got arrested. He would have never got out of jail. He left wealth on me. I am not telling you to do that to your children. But what I am here to tell you this morning is this. I I, I never said, thank God, here comes my dad down the hall to tear my little behind up. I never said that. It seemed unpleasant. But you know what? The Bible says it produces a harvest of righteousness and here's the good here's the good part and peace he puts peace in your life for those who have been trained by it see here's what we got to understand the good shepherd loves us enough to correct us to correct us the fourth thing that the good shepherd does is he protects the word of god says even though i walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Watch this. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What do you mean? You just broke the lamb's leg. It's a comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. I was studying this part, and you know what? You know, we've often thought about this as prayer, and it is prayer when we anoint people with oil, and it, we relate that to prayer, but there was actually a, what... What he was referring to here, and, and, we, and it has meaning for us today, just like we think it does. But for the, the reason he spoke, you, you anoint my head with oil, is because the shepherd would actually take a oil and put it on the lamb's head. Because the, it would, the flies, there was, there was a lot of flies, and the flies would be attracted to the filth and the smell of those, those lambs. And so the shepherd would put this ointment, this oil on the lamb's head, so the flies wouldn't drop their droppings in their ears and, and, and all kind of funguses in the ears. And, and, and in fact, the, the funguses in the ear, uh, the, the bacteria and all the stuff that would happen because of flies would be so bad, the lambs would actually try to get rid of it by bumping their head into the rocks. And they would do it so hard, sometimes they would kill themselves. And so when he's, the word says, you anoint my head with oil, it actually means that he would put that there so the flies wouldn't drop their droppings on their head. And they would ultimately maybe destroy themselves. And, and, and I believe it has meaning for us right now today. That the Lord anoints us with his oil so that we have peace in our life. And we, have, we, we, we don't, we don't want to perish. And we don't want to die. And we don't want to commit suicide. And we don't want to go off the wrong path. But we want to live. We want to have life. He blesses us with abundant life. He blesses us with healthy life. You anoint my head with oil. 
The word says that my cup overflows. This is this was spoken in tradition. Because, you know, maybe you had guests that stayed too long at your house and you're like, when are they gonna leave? Well, this is related to the scripture. Because in the in the Bible days, if you wanted your guests to keep staying, you kept filling their cup up. But if you did, if you if you were ready for them to leave and go to bed, you would stop filling their cup up. And they would know, because their cup would get dry, that it was time for them to leave. And the word says that the Lord, he says, he says, my cup overflows. So what does that tell me? That in my father's house, that he always wants me to stay. Because my cup never runs dry. It overflows, amen, with his goodness and his mercy. In fact, the word says his love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God says that, that the good shepherd will leave the 99. He will leave all those that are safe and he will go after the one lost sheep. What does it tell me? What does it tell me this morning that he's pursuing me right now? That he's after you and me right now. That he loves us right enough right now today to pursue us. And I want, to, I want you to stand with me today. And I want to give you a, one last little story today as we close. <clears throat> there was this professor in a Bible college that was able to recite the, the 23rd Psalms. And, and he, when it was his turn, he, he said, I'm going to recite, recite the 23rd Psalm. And he, he did it with such eloquence. And he, was, he, he got before the class and he says, I'm going to do it and then I want you to do it. And he got up there and he said, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He had such pronunciation. And it was so awesome. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou rod and the staff, they comfort me. And he did it with such elegance. And he put the pronunciation so properly and it was so dramatic. That at the end of him chanting the 23rd Psalm, the whole class clapped for him. Then he pointed to a shy young boy on the first row. He says, all right, it's your turn. And the young boy was so nervous and so scared. And he was, started trembling. And he began to re recite the 23rd Psalms. And he, he could barely say it. And he was like, yay. And he would stutter. So I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, and he was so emotional, and he was crying. He says, Pal, you're always with me, Lord. And he, he didn't even get all the words right. And he said, and, and though, I, though I, you know, I go through all these things, you're, you're with me in that rod and that staff. And he would break down, and he was emotional, and he would, and it, and it was just, it was almost pathetic. But it was so moving. That at the end of him chanting, reciting the 23rd Psalm, no one in the class was crying. But everyone in the class was crying because of how dramatic it was in the emotional way. And the professor made, he, he made an emphatic statement. He says, I know the psalm, but he knows the shepherd. Amen. And that's what's important, brothers and sisters. Do you know the Psalms only? Got an elegant way about it. It all looks good, sounds good, feels good. It, it, it feels, I mean, it, when I'm around you, it looks like you really, really, really can recite the 23rd Psalms. You're professional at it. But do we know the shepherd? That's the key. Amen. Do you know the shepherd? Amen. I want you to know him this morning. The word of God says in Luke 15 and 4, it says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country? Amen. And go after the lost sheep until he what? Finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. And he carries it back home. Amen. How many want to go home to the Lord this morning? Amen. Would you come and gather with me to the front of this church today? God bless you.
Come stand with me today. You want to go back home to the Lord this morning. Amen.